Here's an, a, an, another, another myth is this uh, money multiplier myth. And that is, uh, and students learn this and, uh, you know, they, it's a really turgid part of the macroeconomics program and students are taught all these formulas and stuff and it's all fake. It's, it's got nothing to do with the way the banking system actually operates. And it, the argument is that banks lend out reserves. And so they've got to basically induce a build-up of reserves before they can make loans. And uh, that's what quantitative easing was all about, that uh, these, these banks were not lending during the crisis because apparently they had no reserves. So the central bank was giving them reserves, cash, in swapping that for other non-liquid financial assets and saying, well, the mainstream textbooks say that that'll create bank lending. Well, no, it doesn't, because banks in the real world don't need reserves to lend. Loans create deposits, not the other way around. So if you've worked in a bank and in the loan department, you just uh, get a credit-worthy borrower, you click some numbers and you've created a loan. And then the reserve branch of the bank, which is on some other floor, worries about the implications for the payment system later. Because ultimately when the deposits are spent and the credit, the cheques come pouring in back in across all the banking system, those cheques have to be covered. But that's a separate operation altogether. And lending is never reserve constrained. And if you don't believe me, here's the Bank of England, 2015. The current dominant intermediation of loanable funds, that's this idea that banks are intermediate, intermediate institutions who take deposits and then lend them out again. Well, if you don't believe... If this is what they're saying. The, that current model views banks in that way. The problem with this view is that in the real world there's no pre-existing loanable funds and these type of institutions don't exist. So if you're an economics lecturer in the room and you've been teaching money multiplier and in your money and banking courses, well then stop doing it. Because you're just telling lies. In the real world there's no mechanism like this that imposes quantitative constraints on banks' ability to create money in this fashion. The main constraint is the bank's expectations concerning profitability and solvency, credit worthy of the borrowers, and the reason why the banks weren't lending during the financial crisis was nothing to do with how many reserves they had. It was due to the fact that nobody wanted to borrow because everyone was scared... Of bo I was going to swear. Uh, <laughs> ..of borrowing because the, they were worried about unemployment and they didn't have enough, the firms didn't have enough sales. So this is core macroeconomic theory that's taught in mainstream programs that the Bank of England has finally admitted is false, fake. Now, I've, I've had a look at latest money and banking textbooks that have come out. No mention of it. Same old story. And the, the other aspect of this is the so-called crowding out theory. That, oh, if the, banks, if the government runs deficits and borrows, then it squeezes squeezes the uh, financial markets for funds that, that are diverted away from profitable private sector borrowing. So you crowd the deficits crowd out private sector spending. Well, here's the Bank of England saying that the bank therefore creates its own funding in the act of lending. Loans create deposits. Uh, no real resources need to be diverted from other users by other agents in order to be able to lend a customer X. In other words, there's no finite supply of funds that the government is competing for, which then penalise... It's a very awkward position. Which, which, which the government then penalises other users from accessing, which is the core of crowding out theory and the core of... one of the core arguments against governments running deficits. It's fake. It doesn't describe at all the way the banking system operates. This is the Bank of England. 
No, the, the oldest central bank in the world. No, very conservative institution. No real resources need to be diverted to, um, from other users when banks make loans. 